World War II was raging with full ferocity. Millions upon millions had lost their lives, and the Nazis were showcasing their evil might. Finally, the U.S. enters the fray, and a young man, William, enlists in the U.S. Navy. On his first day, the induction officer approaches, clipboard in hand, and asks, Name? Hitler, William replies. A smile breaks across the officer's face, hinting at an unspoken jest. Huh, <laughs> glad to see you, Hitler. My name's Hess, he quips, unaware that this isn't a mere game. William is indeed Mr. Hitler, but the officer remains oblivious to his blood tie with Adolf, the maniac haunting the world. In a twist of fate, William harbors a deep loathing for his uncle. How did Adolf Hitler's own nephew find himself enlisting in the U.S. Armed Forces? What led him to hate his own flesh and blood? Could there be echoes of his lineage among us today? Join us as we uncover the story of William Hitler, who served in the U.S. Navy and hated the guts of Adolf Hitler. Back in 1909, amidst the ordinary hustle and bustle of Dublin, Ireland, an inconspicuous horse show was about to set in motion a series of events that would ripple through history. Alois Hitler Jr., the half-brother of the enigmatic Adolf Hitler, found himself amid the crowd. Among the prancing horses and vibrant spectators, his gaze settled upon a 17-year-old girl named Bridget Dowling. Little did anyone suspect that this seemingly chance encounter would evolve into a union that would impact generations to come. In the following years, Alois and Bridget united in marriage. But here's where it gets interesting. Bridget's father wasn't exactly thrilled about the match. In fact, he considered filing kidnapping charges against Alois. Yet, no legal actions were taken, and the couple embarked on their life journey together. Their home found roots in Toxteth, a bustling part of Liverpool with its own distinctive charm. Skipping ahead to 1911, a new chapter began with the arrival of their first and only child, William Patrick Hitler. Amid the warm embrace of the locals, little did anyone suspect that this adorable baby would one day bear a surname that would echo through history, albeit for reasons no one could predict. Years rolled by, and Alois made a decision that would leave a lasting impact. He ventured to Germany, leaving Bridget and William behind. He embarked on a new chapter, ultimately remarrying and navigating through the tumultuous times of World War I. Meanwhile, Bridget and William faced their own challenges, bearing the weight of separation. Fast forward to the 1920s, and William embarked on a journey to Germany, reuniting with his father in a nation undergoing a transformation. These visits offered a glimpse into the growing fervor of the Nazi movement, led by his infamous uncle, Adolf. Little did William know, these encounters would soon become integral to the story. As the 1930s unfolded, William's path took an unexpected turn. His writings about his uncle garnered attention, but not the kind he'd hoped for. Adolf, now a charismatic figure of rising prominence, took issue with the portrayal. William found himself summoned to Berlin, facing a distraught Hitler who threatened William that his personal life should not be exposed. This tumultuous period brought unforeseen consequences. William's public connection to Adolf led to his isolation in England, leading to job loss and limited prospects. With few options left, he looked to Germany for opportunities, hoping his uncle's influence could aid his search. However, Germany was far from welcoming. William found himself entangled in a complex web of familial and political dynamics. Hitler's ever-watchful eye led to accusations and suspicions, leaving William without steady ground to stand on. He later recounted the constant surveillance and his uncle's shifting attitudes. Amid these challenges, William made a daring move, attempting to blackmail his powerful uncle. William laid his cards on the table, proposing a simple deal to his influential uncle Adolf Hitler. Secure me an easy, well-paying job, and I'll keep our family's controversial history under wraps. 
It was a tantalizing offer, poised to exploit their shared blood ties for personal gain. Adolf Hitler, no stranger to intricate schemes, responded with a challenge of his own. He counteroffered, Renounce your British citizenship and then we can discuss our terms. This wasn't a mere request. It was a calculated move to gauge William's loyalty and measure his commitment. William, shrewd and perceptive, recognized the dangerous path ahead. He saw through the veneer of the offer and realized that giving up his citizenship would make him vulnerable and powerless. Knowing that this was a game he couldn't afford to lose, William made a decisive choice. He left his uncle to his own machinations, retreating to England but not before leaving behind a parting shot. In a final act of defiance, William issued a warning to his uncle, an ultimatum that cut to the heart of Adolf Hitler's identity, which read, quote, I'm prepared to reveal to the world that your paternal grandfather was Jewish, which implies that you are Jewish too. Consider that for a headline, end quote. This revelation, whether factual or not, had the potential to unravel the carefully constructed persona of Adolf Hitler, whose Aryan ideology formed the core of his twisted beliefs. Now, while historians have since questioned the accuracy of this claim, the implications were undeniable. William, now residing in London, made good on his promise. He penned an article that cast an unflattering light on his uncle, published in Look Magazine in 1939 under the provocative title, Why I Hate My Uncle. This publication carried a weight that extended beyond its pages, as it coincided with a pivotal moment in history. In this tumultuous era, as the world was standing on the edge of a cataclysmic conflict, Adolf Hitler's influence loomed large. His name reverberated not only through Germany, but also across international borders, including the British Isles. When William's article emerged, Adolf Hitler was on the brink of executing his audacious plan, the invasion of Poland. Mere days after the publication, the declaration of war resounded, and Britain found itself entangled in a monumental struggle against Germany. When William sat down to write that article, he was like a storyteller in a grand theater. But the story he was telling wasn't just about anyone. It was about his own uncle, Adolf Hitler. He wanted to show the world a side of Hitler that they hadn't seen before, to peel back the curtain and reveal the man behind the menacing mask. William painted a vivid picture of a tea party where Hitler's favorite dessert, cakes with whipped cream, took center stage. But there was something strange, too. Dandruff on Hitler's coat, and the way he moved, almost like a girl. Now, it's the kind of stuff that might make you chuckle, but for William, it was more than just a funny observation. It was a way to show that even powerful figures have their quirks. But William didn't stop there. He dug deeper, sharing stories about Hitler's troubled relationships, how he had a hand in pushing a woman to the edge of a nervous breakdown. This was no ordinary tea time gossip. This was a revelation that made Hitler seem human, not just a monster in history books. When the article was published, it was like dropping a pebble into a pond. The ripples spread far and wide. Hitler's reaction was intense, like a storm gathering in the distance. William wrote, quote, he was furious. Pacing up and down, wild-eyed and tearful, he made me promise to take back what I'd written and threatened to end his own life if anything more was said about his personal life." End quote. It was as if William had uncovered a secret that Hitler desperately wanted to keep hidden. But here's where things get really interesting. William's article didn't just change how people saw Hitler, it changed how they saw William too. Suddenly, he wasn't just a regular guy. He was the nephew of one of the most feared men in the world. In England, where he lived, people turned their backs on him. His job disappeared like a puff of smoke in the wind. So what did William do? He faced a choice. Stay in England and bear the weight of his uncle's reputation, or make a fresh start in a new land. He chose the latter, crossing the ocean to the United States, 
a place that hadn't yet joined the war that was raging in other parts of the world. While William was finding his feet in this new country, Hitler's power was growing stronger. He unleashed a lightning-fast attack called the Blitzkrieg, which was like a storm of tanks and soldiers sweeping across Europe. Nation after nation fell before his might, like dominoes tumbling down. Meanwhile, across the ocean, the United States was standing on the sidelines, watching this storm gather. Most people in America didn't want to get involved. They thought, why should we care about a war happening far away? But that all changed in a flash when Japan attacked a place called Pearl Harbor. Suddenly, the U.S. was thrust into the heart of the conflict, and the whole world was at war. And so, in the midst of all this chaos, we find William, a man with an unusual last name and a desire to do something meaningful. He decided to write a letter, not to a friend, but to the President of the United States, Franklin D. Roosevelt. In his letter, William said he wanted to join the fight against the bad guys, even though he was related to one of the worst, his own uncle, Hitler. He explained how he had warned people about Hitler before, how he had tried to tell them that bad things were coming. But he also knew he had gotten some things wrong, like when he once thought that Hitler's army was weak. It turns out he was very wrong about that. In a twist of fate, William, the enigmatic nephew of the infamous Adolf Hitler, made a curious prediction that reverberated through the corridors of history. He foresaw a storm brewing in his homeland, Germany, and dared to imagine a day when the quote-unquote good German people would rise against his diabolical uncle's regime. In a metaphor that seemed to encapsulate the insidious nature of the Nazis, William declared that they were, quote, feeding on Germany's flesh, hinting at the parasitic hold Hitler's policies had on the nation. Sworn into the U.S. Navy in New York City on March 6, 1944, William Hitler went on to serve three years as a pharmacist's mate, receiving the Purple Heart for a wound he suffered. He was discharged in 1947. Having grown weary of the constant attention and controversy surrounding his well-known last name, William made a significant change. After he finished his time in the Navy and returned to civilian life, he decided to adopt a new surname, Stuart Houston. This change allowed him to distance himself from his past and the negative associations tied to his original family name. In the years that followed, William found love and companionship. He married Phyllis Jean Jacques, who was originally from Germany. The couple decided to settle down in a place called Patchogue, which is located on Long Island in New York. Here, they began building their life together. William and Phyllis went on to have four children. Interestingly, their first child was given the unexpected middle name Adolf. This choice might have raised eyebrows given the historical context, but it seemed to reflect their desire to lead ordinary lives despite their unique family history. With a commitment to making a positive impact, William established a blood analysis laboratory known as Brookhaven Laboratories. This lab was set up right in the comfort of their own family home. William's dedication to science and discovery was evident in his endeavor, which allowed him to contribute to the world in a meaningful way. Tragedy eventually struck the family when William Stuart Houston passed away on July 14, 1987. He was laid to rest next to his late mother in Coram, New York. Remarkably, his children did not go on to have children of their own, which brought an end to their branch of the family tree. Throughout his life, William made a conscious effort to redefine himself and his legacy. He immersed himself in his new life in the United States, striving to break free from the shadow of his family's past. His determination led him to forge his own path, marked by marriage, raising a family, and contributing to the field of science through his laboratory. William Patrick Hitler Stuart Houston's story is a testament to the power of transformation and resilience. His journey symbolizes the struggle to overcome a challenging heritage and create a new identity, while still acknowledging the complexities of his past. In the end, 
His name continues to evoke curiosity and intrigue, reminding us that even in the face of extraordinary circumstances, the human spirit has the capacity to rise above adversity and shape its own destiny. Now, we would like to hear from you. What do you think of William Patrick Hitler Stuart Houston's remarkable journey? How would you have navigated the complex web of family ties and historical legacies if you were in his shoes? Please share your insights and thoughts with us in the comments below. Don't forget to like the video and make sure to subscribe to our channel to stay updated on more compelling episodes of military history. Together, let's continue to learn.